Today I'm going to show you how I write notes in a program called RemNote, where concepts are nested into broader concepts, sort of like an accordion of notes. Each of these nested concepts, farther and farther away from the broader concept, become more and more focused. That is sort of the classic bullet point approach to note taking. However, RemNote takes it a few steps further. It also has a pretty intuitive backlinking tagging system that then turns these broad concepts and other concepts into something like a graph or a web of ideas, which creates an environment that is good for creating something like a knowledge base or connected thinking. And on top of that, you have the ability to create flashcards in RemNote, of which has a built-in spaced repetition system. It's pretty sweet. It kind of has everything you need. I use it as a knowledge base and for those who are students, this is especially useful, but also for life learners, this is pretty cool, especially those who want to retain information, not just collect it. So I'm going to kind of just go through the basics of this program. How do I write notes in it? Also, how do you make flashcards? There are different types of flashcards you can make, when to make them, when not to make them, and sort of just an introduction. So let's get right into it. So when you go into RemNote, you're going to be greeted with something like this. You're going to have three different sections on your sidebar that are called pinned, draft, and finished. Every new folder, go up here and add a folder or a document with today's date, or just a plain document, will be added to this draft section. So I'm going to start with this folder called Practical Guide to Writing Notes in RemNote for this tutorial. These folders act a lot like a dashboard or a hub in Notion. So everything within this hub will be connected to the title. So sort of like the classic structure of a note taking program, we have heading one. So forward slash H1. This will be our broadest concept or topic that we are learning. Within that will be an H2 tag that will be sort of like a main subtopic of this broader topic. We're going to nest that inside of it. Let's say it's the first one. And then within here, I'm going to create sort of an H3 tag that will act as a section breaker for this subtopic. So section within main subtopic one. So that's going to be our little accordion. You can see you can toggle everything in and out. This will be connected to main subtopic and main subtopic connected to broad topic. If I were to click into this section within main subtopic one, you can see up at the top that that structure is written up here. As well, whenever you create a heading, this power up rem is created and it looks like a tag because it is. So if we click on here, we can see all of the heading styles across all of our hubs across the entire workspace. So I do have these portals within it so that I can really go in and see all of my concepts. So let's add one to H you can go over to this link icon and see all of the H3 headings across my workspace. I want to add a search portal so I can really look at everything. So if I want to go into maybe Dex in my French hub and I want to change something really quickly, I can go in here and change it. It will actually appear in this hub. So let me show you. If I go into broad topic here and I add information to this rem that information is added so portals are pretty nice it's not just for searching you can also edit stuff in them let's start writing some mock-up notes what i like to do underneath the broad topic is write something called a summary and main points i want to put three colons next to it to create a multi-line flashcard and i'll show you what that is in a little bit but I'm gonna actually leave this empty for now because I'm not gonna fill in this summary until I have a better idea of what this topic is about. But I'll leave that there for now. Next, I'm gonna create that H2 tag for our first main subtopic. Let's call it top tier parent one. Uh, what I like to do is put a line here and write a short summary after. This will not be a flashcard. This is plain text. If I were to replace this line with a double colon, it would turn into a flashcard and prompt me to remember the summary. Or if I have it backwards, I can disable that if I want. It will show me the summary and prompt me to remember the top tier parent. I usually don't really like doing that and we'll just put a line there. 
So under here, I'm going to put some related knowledge to this parent that has a summary I want to remember. And I only want to practice it forward. Next, there's some more related knowledge that I have, but I don't really want to turn it into a flashcard. Don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to put a straight up and down line and a summary here. So the next one down, let's create a parent concept within this top tier parent. So the mantra of sort of RemNote is breaking every single concept down into descriptors. This is good if you want to retain information and also to learn it better because the best way to learn anything is to break it down into the smallest bits you can. And this is what is going to encourage you to do that. I'm going to put three colons because I want to break this up into different descriptors. So let's say descriptor one and descriptor two. So this is going to turn into a flashcard. And if I click this parent concept, click within it, come down here. So not only is the front of the card the parent concept and asking us to remember the descriptors, it's also showing us the top tier parent one and its summary, the broad topic, and the folder we're in. So let's add another parent concept in here. One, two, three. Let's say this is a historical event and I want to break it up into sub events. So let's say within this, we have event one, event two, and event three. But I also want to ask myself some questions like, what is the difference between event two and three? I'm going to do a double colon and show the answer over here. And this will turn into a flashcard. It will prompt me with the question and ask me to remember the answer. And I maybe have another question, like what do events one and three have in common? Now, the problem with this layout is that these two questions are still under this multi line. So if I were to click within this parent concept, the flashcard, as you can see, if I enable back practice backward, the answer would also not just be the three events, but these questions, which is not true. I just want to see those three events and then be prompted with the question. With something like this, I would structure it a little bit different. Let's delete this and remove these. So if we want to remove this as a list or a set, we're going to do that just forward slash remove list slash set item designation. Now within here, I actually want to put event one, event two, and event three in the same rem. Then what I'm going to do is tab these questions under the events. When I'm prompted to remember the three events, those are the only ones that will show on the back of the card, which is exactly what I want. Not only will I see the question, I will see event one, two, and three. So when I have this question, what is the difference between event two and three? I can reference event two and three above. The best way to kind of think about this is again in that accordion style. These flashcards are showing you everything going up in the hierarchy. So now let's create an H3 heading to section out this top tier a little bit. Let's say, let's just call this nested section and let's do a summary. Except here, let's make it a flashcard. Let's do a double colon and it will show up here. And I do want it to be backwards because I think that might be useful. So within here, let's nest inside of it. Now, if I were to bring this toggle up, I will have sort of the basic information of this top tier parent. And in this nested section, I am starting to break it down and we're getting further away from the broader topic. So now within here, let's say we have some related knowledge and a summary that I want to be in a flashcard. Below that, I have a parent concept. Now for this one, I want to create a multi-line list again, but I want to create something a little different. It's going to be called a set. So I'm going to turn this concept type into a set. You'll notice that instead of a bullet point, we have a dash. So let's fill this in. Let's say descriptor one and descriptor two and descriptor three. So if I were to look at this flashcard, it's not just going to prompt me to remember all three descriptors. It's going to prompt me one at a time. Whereas the multi-line bullet point flashcard is going to ask you, what are all descriptors in one go? This is nice if we are trying to learn consecutive descriptors. Like if descriptor one 
is the cause of our concept. Descriptor two might be event and descriptor three may be the effect. So as we answer each one, the cause, I'll be able to reference that cause in order to remember the event and then reference the event in order to remember the effect. Now we can actually do something like a hybrid. Let's say within this event, we wanna remember sub events of it. We can bring this in even further and do three colons for multi-line and go event one and event two. Now, how does this flashcard look? We'll be prompted to remember each descriptor like before, but when we are asked about descriptor two, we are going to be asked to recall those two events that coincide with it. Let's do another parent concept and a summary here, but I don't really want that to be a flashcard, but I do want to bold it because it looks a bit odd and inconsistent. So I'm just gonna highlight it and bold it. I'm gonna have some questions. So question one, and an answer, question two, and an answer. And I don't wanna practice this backwards. I just wanna be prompted with the question. And then within this, I can do a nested related concept. So now we're getting even further away from this broad topic. Within here, I wanna do another set maybe, and just say descriptor one and descriptor two. Okay. So let's nest the, all of that inside and let's create another top tier parent two. Now I'm gonna show you how to use something called a close function. This is very similar to Anki. So if I were to have some information here, this is the summary of main subtopic two in plain text. And I want to recall this word I'll go into create close and main subtopic two. So if I were to look at this flashcard, it will prompt me to remember the, and in another instance, prompt me to remember main subtopic two. Now let's say I don't really wanna separate these two closes. I want this to ask me, what are both of these terms? So I'm gonna merge all closes. Now, if we look at the flashcard again, it will only be one flashcard that will prompt us to remember both terms. So now that we got sort of the basics out of the way, I wanna go in and turn this broad topic into a document since we have a lot of information in it so far. So tag as document. And I also wanna tag this top tier parent one as a document, not this nested section. We're gonna keep that a bullet point. And let's also turn this one into a document. So if we go over to our sidebar, we're gonna see within broad topic, we'll see our broad topic folder and our two documents inside. So now that we've gone over this flashcard setup, let's look at the flashcards. So how you're gonna access um, these flashcards is either by going to your sidebar and going to this Q button here, and that will give you flashcards for your entire workspace. So if this is showing me my French hub, it will also show me my knowledge base. I can come up here and practice just the rem in this document either with spaced repetition or without spaced repetition. So in here you can either type out your answer or recall the answer and then show it to see if you are right. You can press K or this sad face here if you're wrong, press L or the smiley face if you're right, and press comma or this neutral face if you knew it, but not very well. There's also a question mark here to uh, indicate if you accidentally press that show answer too early. Uh, you can also press H for that as a shortcut. There is also an edit later button and an edit now button. So if I were to go to edit now or for a shortcut, press E, it will prompt me to this portal. Now let's say I want to edit a flashcard later. I can press this and go back to my notes and I will see that the concept I was prompted to edit will have this signal here. And if I'm done editing, I will press done editing. So that's kind of how the flashcards work. You can either recall the answer to a flashcard or type the answer. And if you saw my French video, you can also embed audio clips to check if pronunciation is correct.
for say language learning. Let's sort of put all of these here and look at this summary part that we left blank earlier. In the first bullet, I'll go summary descriptor. And this will be the, like for example, the cause of this topic. Usually I'm doing historical stuff. So it would be like a cause and effect summary. Down below this, I might say summary of the uh, events. And I might actually make this a multi-line. What I'll do here is have myself uh, sort of recall these broad events inside here. And then also the effect of this broad topic. Now, what I would do up here in this summary, since I already have a lot of notes written, is I would link this summary descriptor to some sort of note down here. So let's say this top tier parent one concept is the cause of our broad topic, but more so I want to relate this summary rem up here. So instead of writing this out, I might just link it to that rem. To do that, I'm gonna go open bracket twice. So open bracket, open bracket, and I'm gonna go and find this. So as you can see, we have a link to this rem here instead of writing it out. And if you look over at the original rem, it will show that we have indeed linked it elsewhere in our workspace. What you can also do, let's say I want to not just see related knowledge, but I also want to see that summary there. What I can do is right click on it and say show content and it will give me that summary. And I can do the same things for all of these here. Now let's say I don't have an event that is identical to this one in here, but I have one that's related. Let's say from this parent concept down here with these three events, it does directly relate to it. So there's two ways to tag related content. I can either go hashtag, hashtag parent concept and find it. And if I were to go shift click, I can see where this tag is coming from. It'll highlight for me here and show me the top tier parent that concept is nested under in a separate page. Close that second pane. And again, that's shift click to open a second pane. Another way I can show a related rem is to go open bracket, open bracket again and find it. Now, if we come down here, we can see that we have it linked in one spot. We have it linked right up here. If I were to hashtag it, however, it would show me not only a link has been made, but a hashtag has been made and also how many. My advice for tagging. Hashtags I would use for more broad ideas. If I want a more focused tag that shows me concepts that are within the body of this page or are closely related, I will use this rem reference. And again, that's two open brackets. So getting away from tagging, I could do a whole video on that. So if you're really into color coding, say you wanna color concepts red that are more difficult and green that are easier, or if you wanna use colors for indicating whether you wanna research something more, get into it more, or whatever else, this is nice because you can go into this power up highlight and find all of your concept in each color. So all of your green, all of your red, yellow, purple, and orange. I have some in purple and I'm going to go in and add a search portal to see all of them here. I can also go into purple by hitting that dot and doing an isolated practice with or without spaced repetition that is showing me flashcards only from these concepts. So one last thing, there is a dark mode in RemNote. So you can just go forward slash toggle dark mode and a dark mode option is available and we can just toggle back out. So this is all I'm really gonna go into, into this introduction into RemNote. This is just scratching the surface. There are so many other features. There's a lot of new features. They just added, I believe a Pomodoro timer to flashcards, which is interesting. And there's just a lot of other stuff, especially with tagging. So if you want me to do more content on RemNote, let me know. I would be glad to do it. And that's about it. And I uh, will see you guys next time.